Right, well in broad terms, of course this is number eight. We started in 1993 over in the QAG building. Since 2006, since the Gallery of Modern Art came on stream, we've effectively doubled the scale of the Trainial. I think this particular one might have one of the larger footprints across the building because we've also taken over part of the back Australian galleries at Quag, uh, with a wonderful uh, work there by Brooke Andrew. So just in terms of the basics about the show, uh, there are a total of 83 artists in the exhibition and also artist collectives come within that and we also have some 36 countries represented. This is by far the largest number of individual countries and we've gone deeper into West Asia than perhaps we've ever gone before. Uh, countries like um, going the furthest uh, up into the West I can think of uh, there are countries like uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Georgia perhaps might be the most western of the countries represented, uh, then right through the uh, Indian subcontinent, North Asia, right across Southeast Asia, uh, over to we the western, eastern parts of the region, and of course including the whole of the Asia-Pacific region from which there's a very large representation this year. If I were thinking about explaining the themes of the show, I would say that one of the most common threads, really it's been a focus of the exhibition, is performativity. There's been such a strong upswing in performance across the Pacific and more particularly in Southeast Asia, I think, which is evident in this exhibition. So we've looked at the agency of the body, uh, the figure, the collective body, uh, their role in protest, uh, their role in drawing attention to uh, really important social and political issues and often to environmental issues. Uh, there's a lot of commentary about coal and coal mining, a lot of commentary about the effects of the tsunami that hit Fukushima. Um, it's one of those exhibitions in which there are multiple strands of themes which I think have really converged but the body seems to occupy the central place. Kalpa Vriksha, uh, Contemporary Indigenous and Vernacular Art of India, um, is a focus project for APT8. It was really a, um, it's really an opportunity to, for us to look at some of the great diversity of, um, of art forms throughout the several regions of India um, and bring them all together uh, you know, in one kind of focus project, but also a real opportunity to frame that um, in a larger exhibition uh, in the context of other contemporary practices from around the world. One of the um, one of the ideas that that threads through quite a quite a number of the works and projects in uh, APT8 is this idea of the vernacular. Um, and the vernacular, I mean, in the everyday, with not just with everyday materials, but also. Um, but also processes um, and languages and iconographies that are tied to the everyday and are, um, uh, are bound to local cultures. Um, so that's where the artists in Culpa Riksha um, uh, really have a great dialogue with other works that, um, that engage with this idea of the vernacular. Um, and so we've, we've tried to, we've focused quite a bit on some of the younger artists um, working within these art forms and uh, and many of them are, are the second or third generation um, uh, following the kind of the the pioneers of these art forms that were the first ones to get international recognition so it, it was really an opportunity to see what was what was happening now within these art forms um, and of course uh, you know with given the exposure of, of the wide exposure of global events um, and contemporary art now, you can really see that the, a lot of these art forms are, are really kind of uh, moving very quickly and, um, and uh, evolving in really interesting ways.